Let me know what you think though, because this is something I have been mulling over for a long while and I would love to see some rebuttals or maybe some expansion on the thoughts that I have shared. So if you want to have any real impact in the political sphere, the question should not be a matter of rejecting identity politics, but rejecting the wrong kind of identity politics. We should aim to preserve identities that have held societies together, promoted social cohesion, and managed to hand each individual a meaningful position in the larger social macrocosm. These identities being identities of culture. Cultural identity goes much deeper than skin color or gender. It brings members of a society together on the basis of shared network of ideas and behaviors in the form of values and customs that have been meticulously constructed and perfected over millennia and have been ingrained in the minds of people for generations through families and communities passing them on. All right, so the first thing Lauren does is she shares with us the totally unoriginal idea of uniting people on the basis of ideas. Culture is an aggregate of ideas, of norms. This is a wizened, moribund notion. It is the heart of conservatism. It was there at its inception. It has been tried, and it is a failure. She then goes on to say that culture is deeper than skin color. Usually people use skin color as a euphemism for race. Sometimes they'll use it when they're lying, as you see in anti-whites very often, and sometimes they'll use it when they're stupid. I don't think Lauren is stupid, so I think she's using skin color as a euphemism for race. Now, culture cannot be deeper than race because race is the wellspring of culture. Culture is a people's biospiritual expressions projected onto their environment. It is the aggregate of those expressions. It's why Western kind produces Western civilization. Asians produce Asian civilization, etc. Different groups of people only appear to adopt the ideas of their host when they are in a position that I refer to as numerically diffident. When they are numerically diffident, they will mimic their host population. However, when they achieve what I refer to as numerical courage, they begin to express themselves and to project their bio-spirit onto their environment. It is the reason why in Western civilization we have white flight, brown flight, black flight. It's not just because in our case, because the area has become more dangerous, though that's often the cause. It's also because the area no longer feels like us. It no longer feels comfortable. This is a manifestation of the discomfort we feel the discomfort that all races feel, when submerged in the biospiritual expressions of another race of people. It's the reason why, uh, when peoples are in close proximity and they all have numerical courage, you have conflict and violent balkanization. It's not because they look different. It's because, I guess crudely put, they have different instinctual behaviors that manifests in decisions and norms and likes, etc., in, and in their aggregate is their culture, as those decisions intersect with their environments. And so, to achieve this notion of uniting people, and I believe Lauren must be talking about uniting different races of people, uh, uniting them on the basis of culture by getting them to adopt the values and norms of Western civilization, which are our biospiritual expressions. The only way that's possible is if those non-white peoples are in a numerically diffident position, but they won't be comfortable. This is a perennial complaint we hear from non-white, anti-whites, is that they don't feel comfortable. Society doesn't reflect them, and it doesn't. And there's nothing that we can do 
to make them feel comfortable, except to disappear. So, A, these ideas, this idea rather, of uniting people on the basis of culture is superannuated and it's time to let it die. Uh, and B, culture is most certainly not deeper than race. Race is the wellspring of culture. It's our bio-spiritual expressions. And there is nothing that can change that. In fact, in our world of mass immigration with no assimilation, people tend to transmit their deeply ingrained identity to the new country they move to rather than adopt the cultural identity of that country, fragmenting society even further into enclaves.